So the time has come to move away from interacting with databases with raw SQL and instead use SQL Alchemy, which is a powerful abstraction layer and object relational mapper. Most object relational mappers for ORMs increase your productivity because you don't have to switch languages, the SQL in other words, as you develop and interact with your database. There's also the added benefit of portability. Since SQL Alchemy is a high-level ORM, it can abstract the database engine, making it easy to switch from, say, SQLite to Postgres, for example. Sounds too good to be true? Well, it can be. There is a slight decrease in performance that is inherent with all ORMs due to the overhead from converting objects to much simpler data formats found in most databases, and vice versa, of course. In most cases, the productivity gain outweighs the decrease in performance, though. Also, be mindful of the benefits of learning SQL that I outlined in the fifth video. Now, the Flask SQL Alchemy extension further simplifies database interaction by providing a number of pre-configured defaults right out of the box. Be sure to check out the documentation for more details. So let's start by installing the extension with pip. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal. Make sure your virtual environment is activated. And then we can do pip install flask SQL Alchemy. And this will also install the full SQL Alchemy package as well. I already have this installed, so let me just make sure I have the latest version by putting the upgrade flag there. Cool. So now let's recreate our database schema using SQL Alchemy. And take note of how we accomplished this with SQL Alchemy versus how we did it before with just raw SQL. So first let's go ahead and add a file to the root directory called models.py. And then we'll go ahead and open up Sublime. Open up models.py. I'm gonna change the view to columns. And I'm gonna add SQL py so with the sql.py file open side by side with models.py this will make it easy to translate the sql commands over to objects okay so we want to start with our imports and we want to first import the database over which we will specify in just a second within our app.py file and so now let's go ahead and create a new class and we'll call this class blog post. And this is going to inherit from db.model. This class is going to have three fields. Each of these fields are going to be defined as class variables or attributes. So we'll have id equals db.column. And the data type is going to be an integer. And this is our primary key. And that's going to be set to true. So let me go ahead and copy this, and we're going to have two more columns. So you can see over here, we're going to have a title and then a description column. So title and then description. Both of these are going to be string data types. And we're going to set nullable to false on each of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep the table name the same as posts. So we can specify the table name in this manner. So under table name, set that to posts. Okay, so now let's go ahead and define our constructor, the under init method for each individual instance attribute. So this is going to be method here, init. So we'll say self.title equals title and self.description equals description. Then we want to use one more method here. I'll explain what this is doing in just a second. Okay, so let's make this a little bit bigger. 
Okay, so this last method is used for specifying how we want the object to be represented when it gets printed. And this will make more sense in just a few minutes. Now we need to update our configuration. So let's go ahead and open up app.py. We want to update the configuration section to initialize SQL Alchemy. So let's first start by updating the imports. So from class that extension that SQL Alchemy on the import SQL Alchemy. Go and comment out SQL value three. So we're going to create the application object. This is going to stay the same. And let's go ahead and do app.config. We'll go over these these configuration settings probably in the next video. And here we put SQL Alchemy database URI. And let's go ahead and set that equal to wherever our SQLite database is going to be. So SQLite colon forward slash forward slash forward slash. And we'll call this post.db instead of sample.db, which we called the last time. And so finally, we want to create the SQL Alchemy object. So we can set DB equal to SQL Alchemy. Then in parentheses, put the app there. And finally, let's go ahead and comment out the connect DB function here since we're not going to be using SQLite 3. And so that's it. So the configuration should now be updated so that we can use SQL Alchemy to manage our database. And just make a mental note that we will need to refactor this home function since it's still using the SQLite 3 Python package to interact with the database. Let's go ahead and create our database first. So we want to create a new file called dbcreate.py. And that's just going to go in our main directory. So let's go ahead and start with the imports. So let's import the database, the one that we just created here, the SQL Alchemy database, the object there. Go ahead and import that. And then also we need to import our schema. And now put a comment here, create the database and the DB tables, commit the changes. Okay, so to create the database, there is one command, it's called create all, so just db.create all, which initializes the database based on the schema defined in our models.py file. And this is part of the power that you get with SQL Alchemy. There's one command to create the database. And keep in mind, you are having to convert these objects over to the database domain. And then we can go ahead and insert some data. Dot add parentheses, and let's put the schema name, class name there. And then we can use some of the same things we are using before. So the title is going to be good. Then let's add the description of I'm good. And copy that. Paste it. And how about we'll do the same thing? Well, I'm well. And then after we add the data, then we need to commit the changes. So we can just do db.session and then commit. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this file to create our database. So back within our terminal here, python db create.py. And since we didn't get an error, we can go ahead and assume that it worked. But let's go ahead and double check that. So let's enter the shell. You can either use IPython or the regular Python shell. And now we can go ahead and query the database import our model here. So from models import blog post. 
and then set the variable posts equal to the actual query so blog post dot query dot all and this is equivalent to the select command select all from post so let's look a little bit closer to this output so we have a list here this list has two values you can see title good and title well so where is that coming from exactly. So do you remember that method that we used within the models? This method here? That's actually where this is coming from. This really just allows us to represent the object with a string. So let me just show you like one quick way of like how to update it. So let's put in self.description here. Let's go ahead and test this in the shell. So I need to exit the shell first. Go back into the shell. It's from models import blog posts. Let's query the entire thing. Now you can see not only the title, but the description as well. So we can change this to represent the data how we want it to look when we print it. So let's just go ahead and change that back. Let's test this out just one more time. It's from models import blog posts. There. Cool. So also from the shell, we can run all the SQL commands. We can insert data. We can update data. We can query for data. And then we can also delete data. So let me go ahead and actually import our database here. So from app import db. And then... It's the same syntax here that we used before. So db.session.add and then blog post. Let's go ahead and just say test and shell test. And we can do db.session.commit, add that data. And be sure to go ahead and check out the full Flask SQL Alchemy docs for all the basic commands. And you can see them all right here. So heading back to the shell here, we query the database again, post SQL blog post dot query dot all. Oops. And there is our new post there. Cool. So let's exit the shell. Just as another sanity check, let's view the data in the SQLite browser, just so we can visually see it. Okay, so I'll scroll down here. You can see our old database, and this is the actual dummy database that we created in the last tutorial. And then here's our new database. So if I double click on that, you can take a look at the schema here. So we have an ID, title, description. You can see how that data type that we created, how that converts over to the data types that are found within the SQLite database. So a string converts over to a var car, and of course an integer is just an integer. Then we can browse the data. You can see all the IDs here. These will auto increment, so we don't have to actually input them when we add data. And then you can see the title and then the description here. Okay, so did you remember that we need to refactor the home function? So let's do that now. If we really wanted to, we could still use SQLite to query the database. Let me just show you real quickly how to do that. So if I uncomment SQLite 3 here, and then date this function here and place the name of the database in here. So let me go ahead and fire up the server. And head on over to localhost 5000. Go ahead and log out and then log back in. So here's our data. It's actually showing the ID here and then the title. So let's just take a look at the templates real quick. See what's going on here. Title, description, that's right. Uh, 
So this is actually going to be row 1, and this is going to be row 2, since we have an ID on there now. So if we refresh that, there we go. So we have title, and then we have the description there. So there's our posts. And we could do this. However, this doesn't make much sense now that we are using SQL Alchemy. Since SQL Alchemy lets us query using objects as well as raw SQL if we wanted. So going back to app.py, let's go ahead and comment out this function here and then SQLite 3. Now let's go ahead and update our home function here. So I am going to get rid of all this here as well as these two lines here. We really just need to do one query so we can say posts equals db.session that query and we're querying the blog post model and then let's go ahead and grab all of the posts go ahead and save that getting a pep 8 error here let's see what is that error undefined I don't know if you can see this but undefined name blog post so we need to update the imports and we need to import the models, and we need to import the models after we actually create the SQL Alchemy object, or else if we did it up here, then it would not work. And that's just the way that these imports are working. So within models.py, we're importing the database, and this is the database. So if we tried to import the models up here before we created the database, then we'd have some problems. Hopefully that makes sense. So we can say, from models import blog post. Go ahead and save that. Let's see what's going on up here. We don't need G any longer. So let's go ahead and test this out again. So I'm getting an error here. Can import name blog post. Let me go ahead and I can troubleshoot that, but for now save some time. Let's just put an asterisk here. Okay, looks like it's working now. Go ahead and log out. Log back in. Admin. Admin. And you can see our posts here. So good, I'm good, well, I'm well. Test, shell test. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the server. Let's go ahead and run our test now see what is going on. So we're still getting one failure and it's that failure on this test here. So I'll just test, ensure that the posts show up on the main page. And again, that's because we're asserting hello from the shell. Could get that to pass by adding hello from the shell to our database so that it shows up as a post but that is not the best way to get this test to pass. So we will look at how to refactor this test next time. And everything else is passing. Cool. Okay, so I think we'll go ahead and stop here. What I hope you've gotten out of these videos thus far is that Flask really stays out of your way as you develop your application. Unlike some of the heavier frameworks like Django, it gives us freedom. That said, as we start adding pre-built extensions, like this Flask SQL Alchemy extension, we limit that freedom to some degree. Granted, you could build or roll your own solutions, but these extensions are battle-tested and are continually being updated. So you want to weigh the pros and cons of each route, building versus extending, for your specific situation and your specific app. So next time I think we're going to be doing some refactoring. But we'll go ahead and add a configuration file to better organize and compartmentalize our application. Then we'll update that failing test. And there's probably a few more things that need refactoring that are just escaping me right now. Oh, and we'll get our app fully working on Roku as well. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.